Good night, everybody. Um, this is the Select Committee to Study Barriers to Serving on City Boards and Commissions. Today is August 5th, 2022. This meeting is going to run from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. And, and it's being hosted on Zoom. Uh, the session has been recorded because of uh, open meeting law, and this recording eventually will become available to the public to be able to rewatch it. Um, can we go with roll call, Beth? Sure. Do you prefer people to be their whole name or just your first name for roll call? First name. Javier, are you here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Jamila is not here. <clears throat> Susan? Here. Gwen? Here. Jana? And Garrick is not here as well. And Cynthia. Here. You have a, four, a quorum of four. Thank you so much, Beth. As I said, uh, this meeting is being recorded. Um, if anybody uh, in some point uh, who is present has, uh, would like to talk with a member, feel free to email. Uh, the members of the of the select committee. If you don't feel comfortable giving public testimony on record, feel free to get in touch with us. We're going to move to the first agenda item, which is the public comment. Public comment is going to be um, for two minutes, uh, well, three minutes, depending how many, many people we have. I see two people who are not members of the select committee, so we're going to leave it in three minutes. Uh, we had 15 minutes today for public comment. Uh, feel free either to, to use the raise hand function. If you go to the bottom of your screen on Zoom, in reactions, you're gonna find the raise hand function, just click there. If not, feel free to uh, turn on your camera and raise your hand and I will call on you and Beth will unmute you. And we're opening right now the public uh, comment. We're going to wait a little bit, just in case. <laughs> Excellent. We're going to move uh, out of public comment. Again, um, for anybody who is going to be watching this recording later, feel free to come to our next meeting. It's post is going to be posted on the city's website. Uh, if you want to talk about your experience uh, about applying for committees uh, or any other kind of board citywide, feel free to reach out to us. Um, and I'm going to, I'm not sure if my uh, email is on the website, but I will sort of check later, uh, but probably I'm going to, I'm going to ask people to, to post it. We're going to move to agenda number three, which is minutes of previous meeting. Um, everybody was able to take a look to the to the minutes from last meeting, which feels like a month ago, because it was a month ago. <laughs> Excellent. Is there anybody who would like to amend the minutes or change anything in the minutes? Okay. Um, so. I'm looking for a motion to uh, approve the minutes. Excellent. I'm looking for a second. A second. Excellent. A motion by Mara and when seconded. Uh, Beth, can you call? Can you do the roll call? Javier? Yeah. Here. Here. 
Jamila is still not here. Susan, here. That's a yes vote. Uh, Gwen? Yes. Jenna is also not here. Garrick is not here. And Cynthia? Yes. One, two, three, four. That's unanimous. Yes. We're so we're so good. <laughs> um, excellent. So we're gonna move to the next agenda item. So we're 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 still trying to keep the agenda items pretty open, right? So we're keeping with uh, general discussion discussion items, goals and expectations, formulating record requests to collect data, strategy to collect testimonies, and possible compensation. Um, cool. Um, were you guys able to take a look to the to the to the documents that we got, specifically this the, the spreadsheet and the sort of the writing the document about sort of the Q the frequently asked questions? This is something that I would like sort of to touch base with you because I do think that we can use this document to divide tasks, right? I would love for members to be able to talk to other members of other boards. Um, it could be essentially getting in touch with chairs of other boards. Uh, I know that I know that Cintis is in the in the board of health when you're also in one one board. Mara, I don't I don't remember if you're in one. Are you one? Yes, in which one? The Human Rights Commission. Human Rights Commission with Booker Bush. Yes. Um, one of my favorite people of all time after, uh, of course, after Cynthia. Um, so I think what would be important for us to take this document, uh, the spreadsheet is really important, but I would like uh, for you guys to be able to take a look to the document. Um, I mean, you know, there are vacancies that were seen in that document, such as the Art Council, which has uh, states that has five. And, and, you know, it may be this is this document, we got this document a little more than a month ago. So it may be outdated. But I think it would be important for us to be able to, um, to take a look to it and to have to approach different committees. And I would like to talk about that, about what do you think about the idea, if you think that would be worth doing it, and in which other way we could get sort of a sense of people already serving in, in, in those positions. Maybe we're gonna find people who, you know, applied three times, was not calling and the fourth time was a charm, right? So I think that's that give us sort of a, a, new, a new demographic essentially to talk to people who had been serving. And also this is a people who have been doing it for a, for a while that can talk about, you know, the, the difficulties to do it. If you have children uh, because of work, uh, maybe uh, there are parts in the year that they get more complicated because it's way more, you know, their work, their studies uh, is heavier, right? Uh, towards the end of the year. So these are things that I think would be viable for us to have. And I, I want to open the floor for the conversation. Um, I have a question. Yes. Are you referring to the document that you sent um, on June 30th? Um, I think so. It's a, a spreadsheet in a Word document. Oh, yeah. OK. The spreadsheet has the uh, it says City of Northampton boards, and you have the spreadsheet with the board or committee, contact info, staff, contact chair, number of members, uh, in current vacancies, and how the, the, authority level, the authority level is defined by administrative order. Uh, okay. Susan, are you being are you being attacked by your cat? Yes. Okay. Let us know if you need help. Uh, <laughs> Um, yes, so when, yes, is that that's the thing that I'm talking about? Like what I think is that, uh, I'm going to stop talking. Cynthia. 
Um, yeah, um, Javier, just for clarification, as I go through the list, um, it shows a staff member and a, and a chair. And um, um, so I'm, I just need more specifics as to if we were to contact this individual board, what, what we're asking them. I think you were posing, um, what do you think some of the barriers are perhaps to some of the applicants that you've had, et cetera. And um, I just wanna raise the fundamental point that the website, the city website says that applicants um, will have this conversation um, with, a, with the board or board member or chair or staff person. Um, but the document sent to us, which is called the board and committee primer, does not indicate that at all. Um, it says the mayor exclusively looks at all the applications, makes a decision, and then refers that individual to, sit, to the city council. Um, so, the, so I question at what point the committees or the boards have some uh, involvement uh, in this selection. And um, I, I can only speak for the Board of Health and I know we don't. Um, so unless perhaps we contact the mayor and say, we really need another physician on our board. And in the, my history of being on that board, I, I don't think we've ever done that. So I'm concerned about the process um, mm -hmm. that, and it may be different amongst all the committees and the boards. Um, and it's great that uh, Susan and, and um, well, Gwen, I guess you, you're not on one, right? Or you are, I forget. Um, I'm, also, I'm also on the Northampton Housing Partnership. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I think they're all operating differently and maybe that's good, I don't know. But um, so I guess my question is, what are we asking them when we do a survey and let's try to get the same questions and see if we get different answers. Um, well, actually, I would say that the system was pretty much the same, the process. Um, but like I had submitted my application like a while ago for the Northampton Housing Partnership, long be before, you know, anybody contacted me or anything like that. So you know, it did take a few months, but, you know, I just, I think we had talked earlier about confirmation of some kind, like when, when people submit something, um, that just, just having the confirmation to make sure that it went through and, you know, maybe I did get that and I just don't remember, but anyway. And it was, um, it was kind of a long process. It was, um, you know, there were a lot of steps to go through the process, but I, I, I feel that it's an important process. Um, you know, there are cases that I've heard about where, you know, people disagree and they say, no, I don't, I don't want that person to serve on the board, you know, and, and they might disagree. And so going through a process of voting and all of that, I, I think, I don't know how anybody else feels about that, but it didn't deter me. Um, but I would say the time that went from the time that I put in my application, like say I had a lot of time in my life <laughs> and then and then, um, and then, that might change in a few months or six months or a year or even two years down the road, it could change, so. Mm -hmm. So, this is this is really interesting right i'm gonna three things right the first one so well, cynthia in what so when you see a staff contact and chair if we were listed i have no idea if we're listed i don't think so or maybe yeah um a staff person would be beth right and i would be the one in, in the chair so what i would say is that we should get in touch with the chair <laughs> That's, that's, which is sort of a, technically a civilian. <laughs> right. Um, that, that's, that's the first one, right? The second one, it's, I, and, and I'm, and this is my opinion, I'm willing to be, to do whatever you guys want, but um, 
I, I do, I do, I, I did take a look to that it says, and in, and in fact, even quotes the city charter, Article 3, Section 3.3, 3, appointments by the mayor, right? That's literally the one that you were talking about, Cynthia. Um, what I would say is that, um, in, in, uh, I would imagine that the mayor would say, yes, I do, I take the final decision, but there are people advising that decision and informing that decision, right? Uh, if, it's, if that's something that we want to make explicit as a process, including what Wen was saying that, you know, I apply and I've been here for a couple of months, which is, you know, it's sort of complicated because if you really want to serve and you're applying now, maybe in two months, you don't have the time to do it, right? Maybe in a month, you don't have time to do it. Or it's not that you are you don't have the time to do it, but you needed to take a decision two months ago to make a space in your life for that, right? Uh, and now, because you didn't hear anything, you just fill the gap with what you needed to do, right? And now you don't have the time. So I think this is an extremely good point, which is which helps in different levels, right? It's transparenting best practices. Uh, sets parameter. We can we can actually set parameters saying a person f maximum five days after the. I'm just in, you know I'm just making it up. Five days after they send an application, they should get sort of a confirmation email, and sort of setting out a little bit how much is waiting time to hear back, right? And x amount of time the the they should sort of move because we. We, I'm assuming that if a position needs to be filled, a position needs to be filled. <laughs> so waiting two months is like, <laughs> I don't get it, right? And, and my experience has been different, right? When I have applied, when I have been called to, to serving commissions, uh, I'm being calling, you know, uh, three weeks later, we'll start. So th that's my my sort of experience, but I think this is something that we have, this is a recurrent topic that we have, which is one of the things that may, we, we may want to do is to set up recommendation for best practices. And if we set up best practices in, the, in, in making explicit, the mayor will have the last word, but this is the process that is going, this is who is advising, the, the chair of that specific committee has to be involved in the process, which makes little sense. Because you know, if 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 somebody from the board of health, it's it's uh, it's the chair that that person knows the amount of commitment that it needs. Like in a person walking blindly into a huge commitment or a mid-sized commitment, a small commitment, you know, that person needs to know. It's it's sort of fair for everybody. Um, Susan, I would like to hear about your experience with the Human Rights Commission. I think my experience was more similar to yours, Javier, where I remember I applied and I quickly heard back from the Human Rights Commission. Um, but I know at the time they were they needed positions filled. Um, so I'm sure that also played a part. Uh, but I I remember applying, not hearing back, like you guys said, where I was like, I hope it went through kind of. Um, and but I heard from them fairly soon within the month, I think. So it wasn't too long. Mara, can I ask, did you hear from the mayor's office or the Human Rights Commission? Uh, it was the mayor's office that let me know that it was received. Okay, because that's where it, everything funnels through there first, if I have uh, understanding. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and also, we have to remember that... Um, Specifically, this group was put together by the city council, right? So all our conversations were with city council members. So the nature of the appointment changes, right? Um, so and now going what you were talking about, Cynthia, um, do we need a, stand, a standard set of questions to be able to go and talk to people? I, you know, I would say yes and no. I would say the, the two base questions is what's your experience with, you know, with applicants and how, what's your involvement in that process? 
has it been positive, has it been negative? If we have those two sort of baselines, I that's gonna help sort of the conversation to flow. And I'm saying I'm saying that I would prefer not to have set questions because if you take a look to the to the commissions and the nature of the commissions, it's widely different. There are there are commissions like the Board of Health that had a fair amount of technocrats <laughs> and or or other commissions that you know uh, that are you know the uh, the racer the, the Board of Racers. That's I bet it's an exciting commission, but I also bet that you know it's it's you know specific. So what I would say is that if we talk about with two goals in mind, right? Um, what level of involvement they are having, the chairs in the process, how they would like to improve the process. So we 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 collect the we bring the collective wisdom of the different chairs. Uh, I want to recognize Garrick. How are you? <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you for your patience. I got caught up at work, but I'm grateful to be here with you guys again. I'm just glad that you're here. Really glad. And I'm assuming with air conditioner. I'm sorry, what? I'm assuming that you have air conditioner over there. No, my office is the hottest place in in this building right now. So I'm so, putting in the work. So, <laughs> so Gary, we were talking about the two pieces of documents that we got. Uh, I think from, from Laura and Pam, uh, the spreadsheet is one that has all the list of boards, including the chairs, the vacancies, sort of a brief description, uh, and sort of the, the, the administrative or the definition of it, what they do. If they are advisory in nature, uh, regulatory, if they're adjudicate anything, right? So we're talking sort of, um, as a collective and going and having sort of doing outreach to the chairs of different commissions to gather sort of the collective uh, wisdom of is it working for them? When it's a new applicant, do they get involved? How much questions they get asked? Do they get to interview the person? Are, are, are they expected to do follow-ups? Are is the city doing the follow-up, right? So, and I think this is gonna lead us to probably sort of pretty nifty uh, recommendations about best practices. And, and we, and at the same time, we're not reinventing the wheel, specifically with this, right? When? Um, what I'm thinking is, you know, it's almost kind of situational. Um, so in other words, like, you know, when I was coming in, there was a changing of the guards in terms of Mayor Nakowix leaving and um, GL coming in, Mayor Shara coming in. And um, I remember Jamila had said that she, you know, just never heard anything. And, um, and you know, so it's kind of like, what I'm thinking is like, if we were to devise something um, whereby, almost a little bit automated. I don't know if anybody would fully disagree with me on this, but um, for example, you know, with the Board of Health, you know, if we if we looked at like what what the time is, you know, there would be a lot more time for consideration of who is who's serving on the board, you know, what they're, you know, whatever that is. Um, would be very different than say serving on the Northampton Housing Partnership, you know, so um, or, you know, any other, but we could still get an idea, you know, like Susan said, you know, she heard back right away, you know, there were positions there. Um, and, you know, if it could be like an almost like an automated thing, like, in other words, like, um, if you're, if you're filling out the application online, you know, as soon as it gets submitted, you automatically get sent a confirmation of having submitted it. And then, um, if it's like, say, to the Human Rights Commission, it would it be fair to say that somebody would get back to you within the next 14 business days, you know, and, and we know, like, historically, that's pretty a pretty safe bet. 
Whereas with the Board of Health, it might be more like 30 days, 30 business days. Um, so that's just a thought that I have. Um, it would, um, you know, and then, you know, maybe, maybe the, I don't know if this is too complex, but, <laughs> you know, maybe it's like, you know, the 30 days passes, you know, and, you know, then, you know, like, okay, you know, I didn't hear back from the BOH yet, so I'm just going to contact them, you know, and, or whatever. I, I don't know, just thoughts. I, I think it's like, I mean, you know, when you submit a public record request, um, in, in the spring, for example, it's a portal that you submit your public record request in the Springfield and sends you an automated email with, we got it. That's the kind of stuff that you really wanna know that the city and the, you know, the custodial of records got, right? So I think that makes a little sense. I would ask um, Council President Natch, if you're there, Maybe not. I, I, I'm curious to, to know if there has been any sort of this, or, or uh, Council Foster that just came in. Um, and because I don't know this answer, and I think this is really relevant. If there has been any talks about the creation of a sort of an access portal for different things within the city, and that. Um, something like apply, apply, applications for uh, for commissions on boards would be something that would fall into that and, you know, if that would be sort of a possibility. Uh, Council Foster. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else. Sorry, it took me a minute to unmute there. Um, I, so I just popped in and I heard your question about an access portal or a way for there to be more information for people interested in applying? Did I, did I hear that question correctly? Yes, and for people to be able to submit into the portal their, you know, the their application for a board of commission. So in that way, you know, there is a centralized place. And also, as Wen said, when was one bringing up all this issue, that there is an automated system that actually I know that I submitted successfully my application and I'm not wondering, did they get it or not, right? And I honestly, I don't have any idea if the city has something like this for any other uh, service. So I just, I, I was curious about it. That was the reason what I was asking. Like a confirmation. Know, yeah, it's interesting that you bring that up because the closest thing I can think of as you're talking that um, that is, is somewhat relevant is the Transportation and Parking Commission. If you submit a traffic calming request, there's actually a, a spreadsheet that's showing right. the requests that are out, the order, and whether they're pending or they've been reviewed or haven't oh, been reviewed yet. There is it's kind of really interesting. Um, there is so, an idea. Yeah, that comes from, so the application process itself goes through the mayor's office, um, but that's sort of, as you're talking, like the kind of most real-time, real-world example that, that, um, that I'm thinking of right off the top of my head. Perfect. So just, just to bring a little up to speed, uh, Councilor Foster, we're talking about specifically how in this portion, how to, what kind of best practices we would be able to recommend, sort of processes to a streamline the applications um, in case of where people don't hear for two months or something that is, is gonna sort of make everybody happy at the end of the day that things are moving forward, even if the answer is things are, move, are moving forward slowly. <laughs> but they are moving forward, right? So that's one of the things that we're talking. And the other thing is that uh, we're going to do outreach to the different chairs of the different commissions. Laura and Pam were kind enough that they gave us a full spreadsheet with all the content information, the description of the different boards and commissions in the city. So we have a pretty good starting point uh, collecting sort of community uh, wisdom around. So are you suggesting basically that, you know, these questions that we see, like the questions that are on this, um, that we would ask these questions of various chairs of different committees, you know, for example, you know, okay. Yeah, I, you know, there are people who have, I mean, I know that Booker has been doing this for a while, 
or right in their church that I had been doing here for a while. So Susan, don't tell him I said that. Um, so I, I just want to take advantage of the collective wisdom. And I think that people who has been doing this for a while, like the people from the Board of Health, like Cynthia, uh, people from the Human Rights Commission, there's a lot of good ideas and opinions based in actual sort of live experience of serving. And I think that we can fully take advantage of that. Okay. Excellent. Um, is there any, sorry, Cynthia. Um, I just wanted to point out, I did a quick review of uh, on the city website. Just wanna note that the chair's emails are not listed unless that chair is a staff person that works for the city. And that brings up the question for me. Um, How do we? Okay, so there's some staff people that get to be staff and chair. So we got those emails, but there are some commissions and committees or boards that you got to have a staff person and then a community member that is the chair, which is an interesting, you know, why can't community members be chairs for all committees? Um, so it's a question. Um, so if we were to pursue um, um, splitting up the list, we are going to need the emails of the chairs. Uh, so one of the things that I commit myself is to do that, to collect all the emails from the chairs. Uh, as you know, uh, those chairs are getting emails in relation to their positions and they're serving into the city. That means that email in relationship, exclusively in relationship to the subject of the city matters, public subject to public record. So I'm surprised that they are not uh, posted. I mean, again, when we were talking about, when Wen was talking about sort of having a centralized portal, um, also there should be in that portal information of vac vacancies. People can sort of browse and say, I would like to serve, let's see what's going on. Let's see what's open. You know, I'm a retired teacher. I would like to serve. What is what is available? I think that would that would be revolutionary in Northampton. When? Um, okay, so um, this is making me think of me picking classes for my next semester, and the way that Hampshire has it set up is that um, when I go in to look at the classes, I it it shows me what classes are open, which ones are waitlisted which ones are closed. Um, and if, if it, it has um, to the right on the, in the final column, it has, um, so say I'm waitlisted. So the first, it has three digits. So the first digit is the number of available slots. The second digit is the number that are taken. And the third digit is the number that are waiting on the list for the class. So I think it's kind of cool because, you know, then you can kind of see where you're at, you know, like, well, I'm, you know, 12 people behind, you know, these 12 people, you know, on the waiting list. And, you know, it's, it's not necessarily like, it, it may not necessarily determine the amount of time it might take, but it certainly kind of gives you more of an idea, you know. Absolutely, I think that's 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 really good, and 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 I just want to sort of clarify for context that uh, in this section we're just talking about how to streamline the process, right? In no moment we're sort of forgetting that we're also at some point we're going to have to talk about how do we how would do we have the wider community that is not serving right now to be able to serve, right? And I think one of the portions of that is, is streamlining the process, right? And, and, and that portal has the option to also be, be, be translated to Spanish or other necessary language, right? Yep. Uh, including the forms. So um, I think that's part of this, but I just want to sort of foreshadow what we're going to talk in the next point. And, you know, Sad that we are having a one hour meeting, but I feel that this is extremely sort of a good what we're talking right now.
cool. So I'm gonna commit myself to to collect uh, with <laughs> with Beth the emails of uh <laughs> oh god uh <laughs> the emails from from that i will do it and i will have for you uh the beginning of next week right so we can conquer and uh, divide and conquer um excellent excellent this is this is really nice so we're gonna move to the next one which is um and this is this is something that I, I want to sort of touch base with you, uh, with the members, which is um, in the same way how we are sort of tapping into the collective wisdom of the different existing boards and chairs. I would like to do uh, a, a record request, probably not a public record request because that would take way too long. Just a record request to to the mayor in relationship to the demographics of the people who are serving, uh, age, ethnicity. Uh, the word, the one, two, three, four, five, whatever they are serving from, that's information that I feel we need to have, right? I think it's a uh, great, I didn't even think of the word, but that's a really good idea. Yeah. You know, I, I, I live in board three, which is the renter's word. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Very so, much the same. So I think it's important, but I'm also cognizant that I may be missing a couple of things. So I would like sort of to brainstorm a little bit with you. Um, besides H, word, ethnicity, so demographic, what other thing would be, do you feel uh, would be good to ask in that? Because I want to do one single ask in relation to that. Gender. Gender, okay, perfect. Gender. Identity, you know. Um, go ahead, Cynthia. I'm just gonna borrow from um, a council that I'm on at Cooley Dickinson. We do this um, demographic assessment every year just to see how we're doing. And so veterans is one, um, disability is another. Um, and I think when, when you were talking about identity, I mean, also racial makeup um, is a, can be another. Um, and I don't know if income is appropriate or not and education. Yeah, so everything sounds really good. I have never been in a, in a, in a commission or a board that asked me for my income. So, I was I was thinking uh, about all the, you know, a lot of those you would be able to gather by the by the application, and also this is going to be helpful from the point of view that if the city is not collecting this data, they should be collecting this data. <laughs> they should, right? Uh, Susan, uh, I think this isn't quite demographics, but uh, if they're serving on another board or committee, I think that's probably very helpful. And as you mentioned, Javier, do you own or rent in, in the city? That would be a great alternative to income. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I don't know you guys, but I'm having a Friday of my life now with you. Um, so yeah this is great this is awesome this is great this is really good because you know probably we're not going to get all the data that we're asking because probably the city is not you know collecting everything but even if they're not collecting everything this is gonna this is gonna help uh help us with the recommendations um and as you know in 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 uh when we're talking about administration in a city or in any setup, if you don't count it, if you don't quantify it, it doesn't exist. It's really simple, right? And and taking decisions with data with inexistent data, even more when we're talking about demographics and serving people serving in different communities, it's impossible. It's really impossible. So one of the things that we want to do, because we cannot and it's not on us changing the charter, but it's on us recommending processes that are gonna streamline and build transparency in the process. And I think 
all the things that every one of you have said does that. Excellent. Is there any other um, point that we should be asking? If, even if you think that nah, the city is not going to have it, even if the city is not going to have it, we're going to ask. Susan. Uh, I think whether or not they have children would be also very helpful. Uh, I was, I was going to say whether or not they had pets, which could be considered like children. Maybe uh, number, number in the house, number family size or something like that. Yeah, certainly you want to ask people who are, if they are cursed or not with children, um, if they are blessed or not with pets. That was a good job. Thanks, Susan, for being the only one getting it. Um, excellent. This is really good. And if you think about any, any, anything else, uh, please feel free to, to send me, um, shoot me an email. Javier, okay. can I just ask you one question? Because I think you've delved into the charter um, much more than yes. I have. But um, to serve on a commission or a committee, does one need to be a resident? Is that the minimum qualification? What if you work? I, I, I went through the website, I didn't see minimum qualifications. Um, so, sorry, Susan. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I had this same question myself. And when I asked the chair of the Northampton Commission, they told me that you did have to be a resident because otherwise I was trying to push more Smith students to join boards, but okay. they couldn't connect because they're not residents. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Susan. My answer is gonna, was going to be yes and no. <laughs> Super non-committal. The reality is that when, you, when you're talking about advisory boards, the makeup of the board, it's up to the mayor. If the mayor, if the mayor is going to have somebody who is advising who doesn't live in the city, that's a possibility. But it's different, right? I mean, uh, a couple of years ago, we got a decision from the attorney general saying that advisory boards to the mayor are not necessarily under uh, open meeting law, right? And that was uh, that was after the incident with the down the cameras in the downtown. Well, we're talking about five years, six years ago, right? right. So um, that's interesting. Also, I, don't, I would recommend that every single board and commission has to be subject to open meeting law <laughs> because it's sort of transparency, right? Um, excellent, excellent. This is, this is great. This is so good. This is so good. Excellent. So um, because of the time, I think we're going to table a couple of things, but I would like to move us to possible compensation. Um, Sort of a couple of a couple of pieces of information that I just got. It. Um, I'm working with folks in Greenfield, and as far as I know, uh, uh, the mayor in Greenfield has committed to the has op opened to the possibility because of what happened with the police department to the creation of a commission. They're calling it sort of a task force, and had people compensated. I also got the um, the word. I talked with a former uh, person who was serving in Amherst in a, in, a, in a commission, in an environmental commission, that that commission was uh, compensated. And if if you take a look to the document, so I think there is a part, there is a section in the document that talks about uh, compensation existing a couple of years ago, a fair amount ago in Northampton. Um, the, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because um, we probably were going to ask for a written opinion of the city solicitor. And I just, I just want to set it clear with this group that, um, which is something, you know, that people, people tend to um, not necessarily know is that an opinion by the city solicitor, it's an opinion, right? An opinion that can be challenged by a city council. Um, 
uh, the opinion that can be overridden by a city council or a mayor, depending on the situation, right? Um, so me and, and, and Vice Chair Gore, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna send an, an email to the city solicitor asking for a written opinion in relation to the compensation of people. Um, and probably that's, that's gonna come out in you know, next week and you are gonna be getting uh, a copy of that opinion, right? Uh, and depending how that opinion comes down, we, we're gonna take it from there. But I do feel that the opinion of the city solicitor, it's a starting point. It's not the, it's not the, it's not the period and the ending point of the sentence, right? Sort of the starting point for, to be able to talk about this, right? Um, yeah, I just want to say that clear because I don't want to, you know, uh, sending the email, getting the answer, maybe negative or not, I don't know, and and sending it out and without the context that I just gave you. And I think it's important for us to be able to to be cognizant of it, right? Um, any 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 thought about that? I would like to open the floor, Cynthia. <clears throat> I think it's a great idea and a great approach. Yeah. When? I agree with that. Yeah, sounds good to me. Perfect. So I'm um, gonna do a sort of a time check. It's 8.51. Um, let me see here. Excellent. Um, okay, so I think we, we're gonna we're gonna stop here. Uh, if if everybody's okay, I want to table uh, a strategy to a strategy to collect testimonies because I feel that we need an entire meeting only for that because we really we really need to get the ball rolling for that. Right? It's it's nice that we talk about so streamlining recommend te technical recommendations and and things that are are going to help a lot to whoever lands in the Northampton website, right? But now we need to get the people to go to the Northampton website. And I think that's, that's, that's sort of the challenge right now, right? So um, I'm proposing that we table that item for next, next meeting. And we can just nod, yes, no, um, whatever you want, guys. Nodding, nodding. That's fine. Excellent. Nodding, nodding, thumbs up. We're tabling that section. Um, probably I'm gonna add that to the agenda as an only item, and I'm gonna leave something a little more general to touch base with how we're doing with the what we talked today. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna send a doodle poll um, to tomorrow morning for people to fill out. I, I I'm really grateful that you guys. <laughs> After our blender of uh, last Monday, we just, you know, uh, I know that uh, Council President Nash was surprised that guys, you just, you know, you were able to schedule a meeting like in, in 24 hours. Yeah. And I think that's, that's really good. It's beautiful. Um, summer is a pain in the ass. Um, but I, I really appreciate you guys that, that, that did it and we were able to hear. I know that, you know, Gary, you're working there with no air conditioner. Yes, I'm really grateful for you being yes, right. Uh, Susan, I know, you know, classes and all that, you know, when you have commitments, everybody had commitments at Cynthia too. And I really appreciate that you guys are making the time for this because I do feel that we can make up an actual difference. Um, and, you know, and being honest with you, I like this group. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Sorry. A second. 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 Third. Excellent. Uh, motion to adjourn Cynthia, second by Garrick, and third by Webb. Uh, Beth, you can do the, the roll call. Thank you so much. And, and again, thank you so much for Beth. She has been incredible. And uh, you know, at making my life way easier. Well, Javier, Javier, thank you. 
for being the chair of this group. Could I just, before I do the roll, could I just ask, did you mention uh, item number five on the agenda, the new business? Did you bring that up? And I don't think I heard it. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna do the, 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 the what we're adding to the agenda next time is only gonna be a strategy to collect information and new business. So we leave, we leave it open to check about the conversation from today. Got it, thank you. So regarding adjourning, Javier? Yes. Susan? Yes. Gwen? Yes. Garrick? Yes. Cynthia? Yes. Definitely a unanimous vote. <laughs> 